It's Mina. Welcome back. Um, I want to show you something real quick because we're going to pour over it. But this is one I did when I was in that whole copper obsession phase. And I tried the copper with um, some pearl and that garnet, the extreme sheen garnet. So this worked out better than the other one. Up here it's really pretty. Over here it's really pretty. But I'm not crazy about it with this garnet. It's a little bit, with this copper, it's a little bit too much. So we're going to report over this one. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to show you something, Golden's Paints, because I just got some more because I was out of one and it finally came and I just really, I want to show you how beautiful this is. So this is Golden's Permanent Violet Dark. Just look at this. It's just, it's like... So when I talk about the Golden's Paints having higher pigment and being a better quality product, it's like when I use 60 grams of pouring medium and say Liquitex Basics, which is a great paint, it'd be about 20 or th probably 30 grams of paint to 60 grams of pouring medium. With the Golden's, I would probably use 15 grams of paint to 60 grams of pouring medium because it's a much higher pigmentation. It's a beautiful, just deep, rich color. And the most important thing is that it dries that color. It doesn't dry a completely different, like the Deco Art Extreme Sheet. So I'm going to go ahead and put my base coat on. Say bye-bye, pretty garnet painting. Thank you. Um, so because this is a repour, I have added to my pouring medium, which I will tell you what my pouring medium is, Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish, like always, and water and Floetrol. And then to each cup, I have added some of the GAC 800, which says on there, low crazing extender of pouring acrylic colors. So what that means is it keeps it from cracking and breaking. So since I'm doing a repour on a canvas, I definitely want to add that to a light paint. You don't need a lot, maybe a, like a big squirt for each cup. Since these are 16 ounce cups, I probably put about maybe between half an ounce and an ounce of the GAC 800. So, and it just, it's nice insurance. It sort of keeps your paint a little bit more elastic so that it doesn't crack. So why does paint crack? Do we know? Paint cracks when there's extreme temperature changes, like it goes from a normal, cool, warm temperature to a very hot temperature quickly. The paint can crack because the edges start to set up while the inside is still very wet. And uh, when that happens, that's it cracks. It can also crack if your paint is too thick. Um, if it's too thick, again, that same thing happens. The outside edges start to, to dry and contract, and the inside is still wet, and the top is still wet. And as a result, it does not dry uniformly and evenly. It actually ends up breaking the paint. So the GAC 800 keeps that from happening. Add some elasticity to the polymers and to the paint so that it does not break, which is very nice because we don't always do perfect pours. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So this color I'm putting on here is Artist Loft White. This is mixed with Floetrol. I purposely did not add um, pouring medium to this because pouring medium actually makes things set up faster and I don't want the base coat to set up faster. And Floetrol extends the drying time. So the Floetrol keeps it wet longer and the pouring medium dries it faster. So I didn't put pouring medium in my base coat intentionally. So I think we're gonna do a video on what different things do because I don't think people realize what the difference between pouring medium and Floetrol, you know, Floetrol is a paint conditioner. It's actually not a pouring medium. It was used as a pouring medium when there was a shortage <laughs> of pouring medium or there was a problem with pouring medium, but it can be used, but you should be aware of what it actually is. All right, so. Hey Mina, it sounds like you're sponsored by Golden. I wish. <laughs> Goldens if you want to sponsor me, but they don't sponsor anybody. I just love their paint. Um, I'm not sponsored by anybody. Goldens is an amazing brand and it's slightly more expensive. However, if you consider the fact that you use so much less paint and so much more pouring medium, it actually comes out cheaper for you in the long run than buying a bunch of two ounce bottles and using a, all of it and a ton of pouring medium. So colors, permanent dark violet, from Golden's. Love this color, so happy. Just got another bottle. This one is Anthroquinone Blue from Golden's. 
beautiful, nice, kind of purpley, violety color. Very nice. I love this one. As you can see, my paint is not super thin. It is leaving a very, very small mound and then sinking. So, and this is mixed with Liquitex gloss medium and varnish and Floetrol and a little water. I have my Golden's Payne's Gray, which is probably one of my favorite colors ever. I'm losing the light, so I gotta talk fast. This one is the only one that's not Golden's today. It's Deco Art Americana Decor Metallics in the Pearl. And um, this one is Titan Violet Pale. So it's like a soft pinky violet, more white than violet. I think it's Titan Buff probably, or Titan White and the violet mixed. So there we go. Okay, so last time I used these colors, I did something with pearl and the violet and the Payne's gray, and it was just so beautiful. And I kept trying to do it, and then I did a huge one with everything same except for the violet. I ran out of the Goldens and I used Windsor and Newton, and I didn't like the painting because it was a completely different color. <laughs> so we're gonna do it again with the right colors. So my base coat is laid down. We're gonna do a fantasy pour this time, and I'm going to start with some Payne's Gray, and I'm going to go with this Titan Violet Pale. Then I'm going to put some of the other permanent deep violet in there. And then I'm going to put the pearl in. Oops, it sank a little bit. That's okay. And I'm going to put some of that anthroquinone blue on top. So I'm going to go back to that Titan Pale Violet. Back to violet again. And then I'm going to put some pearl in there. Because that's really pretty. The pearl with that violet and with the panes on the other side is just delicious. Okay, here we go. Look how cool that cup looks. All right, so the few times I've done this now, I've realized I like more straight pour and a little bit less ring pour. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Okay, so we're going to start out about here. Straight pour, a little bit of ring pour. And straight pour while we're moving, and then wandering. That's so cool. I love that effect. And I'm glad it ended up in the middle of the canvas this time. Because usually it's like on the edge. And it makes me mad. Okay, that's awesome. I'm going to pour the next one kind of fast because we're losing the light. Literally. <laughs> so it's so weird because it's like there's this window that I can shoot in either in the morning but then the light is really blue or in the afternoon before the sun goes down because during the day it is so hot here. It's been like 96 and it's just so sunny. You can't even see. Like if you look at the screen of your camera, you don't even know what's going on. I'll put some footage up from this afternoon. I was out here and there's hawks that live close by. There's a nest on the other side of the road. And so there's a mom and a dad and a baby and they were teaching him to like hunt or fly or something. It was the cutest thing ever. And they're up there in the sky with him like yelling at him. <laughs> it was adorable. But I saw them this afternoon and I actually got some footage of them with my phone. So Wow. Oh my god. Oh my goodness. Hello beautiful. Can you see? Where are they? Okay, so I always want to go this way, but I don't want to. I'm going to go, actually I'm going to go from here to here this time. Okay, so more straight pour, then some ring pour, then more straight pour, then some ring pour, then some more ring pour. All right, that's cool. I like that a lot. See how is when there's the straight pour, then it gives you an opportunity for cells. It also gives you an opportunity for more solid ribbons of color versus this. And now because I had less ring pours, we just see these two pretty ones right in the middle and they kind of balance each other. Don't faint. I don't have any gold in my painting. Oh my God, <laughs> I might faint. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna use some of this anthroquinone blue around them as sort of a little bit of a flow extender and I'm probably going to use up the rest of my paint doing this. Okay. Let's 
good. I love this violet. This is like the most amazing color. Okay. All right. I need a bit of pearl because I love the way the pearl looks with that violet. Really pretty. And we have panes left. So we're going to go heavy on the corners on the panes. And that's why you make sure your lids are closed. Okay. So, thank you, darling. I love you. Yes, I do. I'm going to use that whole bottle. <laughs> My husband was with me when I opened the bottle. <laughs> I was making all sorts of weird ooing and awing noises. It was funny. So the only one I have left is that Titan Pale Violet, and I really don't want to put any more pale on here right now. So we're going to leave that in that white. Okay, I'm going to move these over, and we're going to tilt this beautiful darling. I'm very excited about this. This is like, I realized these are sort of my favorite colors, and when I get a new one of them, I always want, oh my god, I wish you could see the sunset. Can you show them the sunset real quick? This is just amazing, and that, my friends, is why I paint out here. Ooh, look at how pretty. Okay, come on back. Let's do this. <sighs> I like this one already. I think it, oh, I didn't even torch it. I'll torch it in a minute because the cells have been developing already. All right, we're going to just kind of go down and move it a little bit. See where the paint wants to go. Kind of distribute it around without really going off the edges yet. This way a bit. And we're gonna go down this way. It's nice and slow. I don't want to go off the edge yet. I just want to get the paint down there moving. down to this edge. Let me turn it so you guys can see. Oops, I'm just holding it. Hang on. Okay. Come back this way. Now we're gonna go down here. I don't want to lose that. This is so cool. <laughs> we haven't actually spilled any off the edge yet, I don't think. Which is pretty cool. Maybe just a little bit over there. Okay. So let's go down this way. corner. Come back a little bit. Now see the, that ring pour this over here was on the edge. Now watch it's going to get stretched out. And if I'm lucky the same thing will happen down here. So let's turn it around again and take it right over the edge a little bit. Spread this side out. There's a lot of paint on here still, but I want to look at it before I decide what I want to take off. This is really cool in here. We need to go over this off this edge first. So before you start deciding 
about your composition and what you want to change, make sure all your corners and edges and stuff are covered, and then you can play. I want to go slow here because I don't want to lose a lot of that. I like what's going on over there. Nice and easy. Now I come back and stretch this side out. Yeah, see, that's cool. And when you open this up, that's when all the cool stuff appears. That's when you get all those beautiful, you know, effects happening. That's pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to go take a little bit of this off and open this up some more. We're just going to bring the paint, the weight of the paint back towards me. So it's in the middle of the canvas. Oh, wow, that's cool. And then we're going to go down. See how fast it's moving? That means that there's too much paint on there and it needs to come off. Because otherwise you will crack, especially on a repour. <laughs> on a repour, you want your thin, your paint thin on the surface. You don't want to leave a lot on there. And also, as you take it off, as you open this up and it all stretches, that's when you start to see some really beautiful effects happening. Okay, there's still too much on there. my shirt <laughs> okay, that's all right because we have enough paint on here that we can easily tip that off no problem get the paint centered over where you want it to go off and then just go down nice and slow like you're driving practically go I'm gonna lose that <laughs> okay <sighs> well so maybe loose-fitting clothing is not the best idea. <laughs> An apron would probably actually be a lot smarter than painting in a t-shirt. But Okay. So now I'm going to grab my torch real quick, and then we're going to torch this, and then we'll be finished. Here we go. So. Hi. I see one area over here where it looks like I touched the canvas too. I'm just going to take what's in my cup and just go right on the edge. Right there. Okay. And just follow the natural curve of what's there already. Let me show my yeah. That's what I was going to get to next. <laughs> We have an area on this side that also needs paint. Okay. Really clever. Julie Cutts taught me to do that because <laughs> she's awesome. Thank you, Julie. Okay. And like I said to my husband, Julie taught me to do this, and that is a very helpful trick because it keeps your paintings from looking. Beginner, <laughs> just slightly more professional. 
I'm not still very, very, very good at it yet, but it's better than, you know, a bunch of fingertips and smudges and things. We have darker blue over there. That's what's above the nose. There we go. Okay. All right. That's good. Little bald spots. That's okay. I'll get that corner in a minute. So, all right. Yeah. Touch the edges or something. Okay. We are losing the light, literally. <laughs> so I think we're gonna be done. Let's finish this off real fast. There we go. That's okay. All right. I am very happy with this one. I love it. I love these colors. I love these paints. Um, if you are on a budget, I understand, but this should be on your wish list or ask. Christmas presents, birthday presents, Golden's paint, man. You will not regret it. I'm, I've am i used a lot of different paint now in the last year, and it just, nothing really compares. I like Liquitex. I like Deco Art. I love both of those, but as in terms of what the colors, like if you just look, how this has that one violet mixed with the pearl and with the panes and with the blue, the anthroquinone, and with that light violet. I mean, everything has a little bit of transparency, but still overlaps and still creates an additional color. I mean, right in here, this is just so pretty. You know, I mean, you just can't beat that color. And the lines are staying crisp and they're separate, and yet there's still areas that they're blended. So, like, this is so neat right here. I love that. I see this is where you get in trouble. When you see stuff you really like and you want to <laughs> accentuate it. And I'm not going to touch the edge again because I think this t-shirt is what's doing it. All right. I'm going to be done. That's it. That's all she wrote. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, you know, think about it. Go to the store and look at the Goldens. Figure out, you know, what your budget is and what you could, even if you buy one bottle, an eight ounce bottle for 20 or $30, it's gonna last you a very long time and give you a much more superior quality product. Think about using better quality materials because then if you do sell your work, you're giving a product that you can be proud of. I have a lot of beautiful paintings that I've done on student grade 12 by 12 test canvases that are kind of warped. It's not the best quality canvas. And even though it's a beautiful painting, I don't really feel comfortable selling that for money or, you know, trying to pass it off as if it's a good quality canvas. So get your good canvases, get the good paint, use the good stuff, and you will create beautiful things. Okay, so this is about a minute later. We are literally losing the light. <laughs> but I love how this one came out. I'm very happy I re-poured over the other one. The other one had some beautiful colors, but not quite together. So this is awesome in here. Look how pretty that is. And so my um, base coat, the Artist Loft, did have a little bit of satin enamels in it. So that might be why we are getting some of this cloudy. Because that's the white. And there is pearl, which is also Deco Art Americana Decor Series. So, you know. <laughs> Look how pretty. I love this. Just gorgeous. My favorite part up here I think that was the ring pour I lost a lot of it which kind of bums me out but you know what are you gonna do but it also opened up this bigger solid blue space of the anthroquinone blue with the Payne's gray and that's a very nice place for your eye to rest it's okay that you have busy areas as long as you have some areas that are more soothing it almost looks like a woman or an elf <laughs> with the ear. <laughs> this is so cool though. So there's that Payne's gray mixed with the pearl and the violet right in there and it's actually more gray now than blue which is really cool. This part is just lovely. <laughs> Look at all those pretty cells. I'm never really going for cells but I'm always happy if they show up. This is so cool.
All right, guys, I'll show you it's when it's dry. See you soon. Oh my God, look at this sunset. Can you see, wow. Holy guacamole, Batman, look at that. We try to come out and enjoy the sunset every night if we can. Oh my God, it's just amazing. The sky is like all orange. <laughs> oh my. Wow. Um, no painter like nature, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay, so this is the next day. It's not completely dry, but it's starting to set up. The edges are dry, but I don't really want to stand it up yet. <laughs> But a lot of cool things have happened in this. Really, really neat. I love this part right here. It kind of looked like a lion yesterday, but look at that gorgeous pearl you see with just this very, very faint blue edge with a little bit of purple tinge to it. So pretty. And then up here, I love that part. That was where my ring pour was. Look at that. Lots of really cool stuff in here. And the pearl mixed with the Payne's Gray and made that like dark silvery color. See, this is the golden paints are just amazing. They really are. Look at that corner. Love that. Some little cells. That's amazing. I love this part. With all those cells in there. So cool. I do always try to show you the corner, so can be oriented to where I'm shooting. Look at these. I like this part. And there's the Payne's Gray. So, I love this piece. That's really cool. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Please remember to like and subscribe and share if possible. I would really appreciate that. We are coming up on our 10,000 subscriber mark. I'm super excited. And if you guys share, then we might get there a little bit faster. So anyway, <laughs> if you want to see more of my stuff, you can check out Mina Villegas Art on Facebook. Or you can also send me messages at Mina at MinaVillegasArt.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying having videos every day. I'm going to try to keep doing this, but it might go, I might miss a day once in a while because we shot a lot today. We shot like four. I'm going to try to make this work though. <laughs> Thank you again for watching. I will see you for the next one. Bye-bye.